What is the Niners, Niners' biggest weakness right now? I'd say the the weakness right now are injuries. Just if there's not many more, uh, or if sp- certain guys like they lost Nick Bosa. If there's a injury at linebacker, another one, I, I don't think they can handle that. Like if they lost Fred Warner, if they lost Joukowsky Tart, who I, I think it was Nick on Twitter saying that he wants uh, Joukowsky Tart playing a little linebacker on, on certain downs too. Um, and I think there's certain guys that they they can't afford to lose, and you can only overcome so many injuries. Injuries aside from playing wise, the offensive line is the one unit that can really hold this team back and they can prevent the offense from reaching their maximum potential. And that's a scary thought. Just seeing what we saw, the inconsistent play of Trent Williams, where he had so many pre-snap penalties and time and time again was putting the 49ers in not ideal situations, turning first and 10 into first and 20. So that was an uncharacteristic game for Trent Williams, so we cut him a break there. But looking at Dan Brunskill and Mike McGlinchey, who, in my opinion, could you name a 49er that's been a bigger disappointment this season than Mike McGlinchey? Because I think he's been probably the biggest disappointment. He's just getting beat so frequently. And, you know, Jerry. The only other person who's in the the running is Trent Williams because the expectations were even higher. McGlinchey's been worse. But, but Trent yeah. Williams, the expectations were through the freaking roof. And I don't so know that he's maybe, been an upgrade over Staley yet. Maybe personally for me, I give Williams a little bit of slack because he missed the entire 2019 season. But True. but he played the first three games. So it's like, where did this brain fart come from on Sunday night against the Eagles where you've already had three games to kind of shake off the rust? So I don't know where that came from. But Mike McGlinchey to me is hands down – been the biggest disappointment and Jarek McKinnon rushed for more yards after contact than he had actual rushing yards like that tells you everything you need to know about the offensive line and Grant I remember when we were having this show over the course of the offseason you said the 49ers offensive line was the only that didn't get better in comparison to last year and we were all like no they're in a better spot now than last year and here we are where Lincoln Thomason he doesn't look the same as he did last year he was a pretty solid guard last year Ben Garland is the superstar of the 49ers offensive line. And once Weston Richford comes back, I think it's a no-brainer to keep him on the offensive line, move him to right guard. But the offensive line is the weakness of this team right now, and they have all the potential to really hold back the offense. Okay. Leo, you're you're, you're, you're muted, Leo. It's okay. Sorry. You're, you're so, Nick, Nick, why'd you give Grant – Credit. Eric Armstead says that he doesn't know what he's talking about because he yeah. never played the I game. Never, I played touch football oh, in yeah. recess in middle school. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. So I don't know what he's talking about. Yeah. All right. So yeah. we could all drill the offensive line. I'm going to switch it up here. Uh, finishing on the pass rush. They've been doing a great job creating pressure. That's awesome. They've been doing a great job creating <laughs> pressure. But the thing is, they're not finishing. We've seen Armstead that you did a great job illustrating that. Get there, not finish. Um, as well as Kinlaw has not finished. I've seen him got got his hands on the quarterbacks multiple times during the past two games. Yet, yet he has no sacks on the season. So it's got to be finishing with the pass rush, and that's where they're hurting, not having D4, not having Bosa. Um, I would even entertain maybe a trade. I don't know what it would take to get Marcus Golden. From the Giants, if it doesn't take much, I know that's Nick's guy. I would I've been saying that. that since since May to sign Marcus Golden. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let me answer. Um, I th- I'm going to go with something intangible. I think it's the the psyche of the team, and it's hard to put your finger on it, but it feels way different than last year. Last last year there was a, a freeness, a confidence, and a fun that they had. I mean, it, this, it's fun when you start eight and zero. But this year, it's like the hangover of losing the Super Bowl and the fact that they felt like it was a revenge tour and they needed to just kind of breeze through everything and get back there. I think they were kind of not surprised, but a little surprised at how hard it is. And they forgot, like, you don't just get back to the Super Bowl. You have to love the process again. And what I've noticed is in week one against the Cardinals, Jimmy Garoppolo had a mini nervous breakdown. I don't know what that was. That was not Jimmy. That was the worst I've ever seen Jimmy. It was terrible. I mean, he looked like he'd lost all confidence. The little pirouette he did in the, in the in the pocket, the way he missed those throws at the end, that was not Jimmy Garoppolo. That was, I feel like he's never going to play that poorly again. It was terrible. 
Then the next week at the at the Jets, Kyle Nelson loses his mind, gets cut. I mean, what the hell was that? And like at the time, you're not like connecting the two. I mean, they have nothing in common. Jimmy Garoppolo has a bad game, doesn't look like himself. The next week, Kyle Nelson cracks and his his uh, career falls apart. Two weeks later, Nick Mullins has a, a nervous breakdown on professional, I mean, on national television. So that's three nervous breakdowns in four weeks. It seems like there's a lot of pressure in Santa Clara. that, And that comes from the top. I think Kyle Shanahan has to do something to take the pressure off the players and say, guys, forget a revenge tour. Let's just have fun and win the next game because we can. We know we're good enough. I, there's something about Shanahan. He's so great of a coach. And he has such high expectations. But I think that it's been a little dark in Santa Clara since they lost. And they got to get through that and change the – the psyche of the team, because right now it seems like some of these players are like, oh, my God, we got to win. Right? You know what I'm saying? That's my analysis. <laughs> That's my <laughs> – How do you spell that? You know it? what I'm saying? Uh, Three, yeah, how do you spell <laughs> that? Three nervous breakdowns in four games. That's a, that's a trend at that point. That's all I'm saying. 